7 plus 18.
what she said. Okay, so I'm going to have to apologize for all the uh, heater noise. It's hard to hear the uh, what I'm saying and what's going on. So instead of uh, me, you know, you guys attempting to watch us through all that heater noise, I figured I'd just speed it up and talk through what I'm up to. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys that are saying that uh, I shouldn't be oiling the uh, bearings as I put them in or that oil is going to cause the bearing to spin. Um, you do realize that these engines run in oil and if a bearing is going to spin it's going to spin because something else was really really wrong um, this is a pressurized crankshaft there is a hole in both bearing halves <laughs> that I'm using and there is going to be pressure forcing oil into the hole on the uh, the main the main bearing cap and the rod cap there's going to be oil forced into there so i think you guys are are just being hypersensitive as to what i'm doing just to sit back and watch you know it's, it should be an enjoyable experience um so anyways uh <laughs> if you just caught that it's you know life on the farm can be really a lot of fun um but teresa's there she's she's actually scraping 50 year old dirt off of a john deere 4010 as i am finishing up putting the bearings into the journals and the uh, in on the rods and uh you'll see me actually get a torque wrench out it's an amazing thing but 
I do own a couple of them. I have a foot pound and an inch pound torque wrench. Um, right now I'm just using a regular old ratchet, getting things, you know, snugged up and then yeah, I will actually torque them down to their proper spec. Now, if you know, oh, look at this. Here's another thing. I'm reading a book. Can you believe that? This is another simple uh, thing uh, you can do if you're not sure of what you're doing. Uh, you can always read it in a book because that's what they're for. Uh, yeah, so once you get it figured out, uh, now you're seeing me adjust the uh, torque wrench. And, uh, you know, just torque them down. It just torque them down. Now, when the in order to torque these things properly, there is in the book, the IT book, which uh, someone so kindly pointed out that the IT book is a watered down version of the John Deere book. I agree. If you've never done one of these things before, uh, buy the John Deere book. It, it, it is much more detailed, and there's a lot of things that are left out. Uh, in the IT shop manual. So, I mean, it's basically the IT shop manual is a refresher course if you've never messed with an engine. And you'll see that I torqued a few and then I got busy with something else. And then I, I come back and I turn it and, uh, you know, I just readjusted the torque wrench. So, in the IT manual, it will give you two torque specs. It'll be like um, 120 to 150 that's is you know 130 to 150 or 120 to 150 so the first number you know if you're not sure you set your torque wrench up and you go these are not torque to yield bolts by the way um but what you do is you set it to 120 you torque everything that needs to be torqued to that torque spec and then you go back and you set it to the higher number and you go over everything again and that should set your torques properly uh, yeah, so anyhow, um, yeah, it's going quite well. Right now I'm putting in the ventilator pump. Uh, these engines had a, a, a ventilator pump. What they would do is pull air out of the intake and pump it down into the crankcase uh, for added cooling. Uh, did it work? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it worked or not. To be quite honest with you, um, the later engines, they they did away with it, and they just don't do it. You know, uh, I don't I don't know why. Maybe it just didn't work out the way they expected it to, or maybe it was such a minute difference that it didn't matter, or maybe just because of modern lubrications, it got better and better. Uh, you know, it didn't. It wasn't such an important thing. Uh, this this tractor is actually coming together quite nicely. If you see it today, uh, if you're a, if you uh, subscribe to my Patreon account, then you'd be like, hey, you know what? That's uh, that thing's damn near ready to go, and it is. I'm waiting for a dampener pulley, and then it's going to get fired up. But Teresa is working diligently over there, and uh, looks good. It looks good. And yes, for anybody who's wondering, this tractor will be painted. I was thinking of having it done professionally, but you know, what's the point in that? Um, I'm okay with a, with a paint gun. I hate painting. That's my problem. Um, but it will be, um, once I get this thing going, running, I'm going to wash it off completely, degrease it, blow it off with the pressure washer, and then uh, drive it back over to the shop where I will you know, pull the exhaust manifold off. Okay, so I am here in the shop. As you can hear, it is very noisy. I have two heaters running on my oil pan for this 4010 engine. Uh, it's went from 65 degrees outside down to 10. So it's pretty cold out there. Uh, what I'm trying to do, and I will have success in it, I can see that... Um, I need to actually move that away a little bit and move that in like that. What I'm doing is I'm heating this pan up. I have to remove the gasket, the old gasket, and heat always helps with that, with that process. Now, if you don't know anything about the early John Deere 4010, 4020s, they had a very small oil pan. And when I say a small oil pan, I mean it, it was tiny. It only holds two gallons of engine oil. So in order, what happens was, when you hook this thing up to a damn hot, uh, you know, like a, a five bottom plow or a four bottom plow, and you're pulling really, really hard, uh, that engine oil gets pretty damn hot because it's working it really hard. Now, back in 
1960, 1963, when these tractors were built, conceived and built, um, the motor oils were not of a good quality. I'm going to step away from this here for a second. They were not of a really great quality. They were pretty much a paraffin based oil that cooked very easily. They would uh, create uh, gunk at the top of the head or sludge as they call it at the top of the on top of the head and I know there's a couple of YouTubers out there or people that watch my channel that don't seem to understand that there are actually valleys in the head on these motors um, that hold oil and you know if you drain the oil you be perfectly careful about it uh, drain it out hot and, uh, put new oil in it, it instantly turns black. Well, that's kind of common and normal because of the sludge and the dirt that gets up in the head or the oil that's stuck in the valleys up in the head. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, uh, two gallons of engine oil was uh, was uh, not sufficient enough to lubricate this motor. Um, and a lot of them just burned up. Uh, so M&W made a really, cool, a really good kit that went from, I think actually some of the early 4010s were only like a gallon and a half of engine oil and they changed it uh, by shortening the dipstick um, and you know you shorten the dipstick and there's still enough oil in there that you know there's not too much oil in it that you'll get windage. Uh, windage is when the, the crankshaft and the connecting rods at the bottom of the pan are smacking into the oil that's laying in the pan. So you can you can get away with more oil in the engine than two gallons, two, two and a half gallons, as long as you don't get that windage uh, problem. But M and W went from the two gallons to the to the uh, in the bottom of the oil pan to a five gallon pan. It was aluminum. It had cooling fins on it, and they were really good oil pans. The problem is they're very, very, very expensive. Even a shot one, one that the the, the threads in the in the bottom of the pan are, are stripped out, they're fifteen hundred bucks. They're very sought after oil pans. So uh, what I'm doing now, because this engine, obviously that oil is old, uh, cooked at the bottom of the pan to be cleaned off. I'm actually heating that oil pan up to the point where it's boiling the oil. Now I know years ago when I was a kid we were running this tractor hard on a blower and I remember shutting it off and hearing the oil actually boiling in the pan. It wasn't the water, it was the oil boiling in the pan. So, oh, somebody's after me. Let me take a look real quick. That's my father. Anyway, so I'm back now. Anyway, uh, when that oil boils in the pan, it sticks to the bottom of the pan and, you know, it becomes sludge. And it'll actually settle in the top of the head and it'll, it'll become sludge up there, which will uh, diminish your engine's life dramatically. So, you can continue to buy the cheap old engine oil that you got back in, say, 1963 when this was new. They still produce it. Penn's oil produces it. Quaker State produces it. It's just like straight 30 weight motor oil or whatnot. Or, you know, the old, the old fashioned types of oil. Uh, lubrication has gone, come a million miles since then. I'm using Schaefer's right now. I have used uh, Rotella T and 1540 know, engine weight, you know, and but now I'm using a semi-synthetic blend of Schaefer's, which is amazing to me. I get better fuel mileage, better better fuel co uh, consumption, and even in the older John Deere tractors that weren't designed for it, but, and I don't have leaks. Everybody's like, oh, you're using synthetic, you're going to have a leak. Well, I'm not going to have a leak. It doesn't leak. Uh, but anyways, I think my pan is just about hot enough because the paraffin base oil that was used is out now actually starting to reliquify at the top. Uh, down in the bottom of the pan you can see that it's it's run out and it is now starting to smoke. So oh, she's dripping. She's dripping. So it becomes sludge until you get it really, really hot. And then it'll just slab off of there. I've got a scraper over on the back side. Teresa was working on that yesterday. And what I'm going to do now that it's hot, I'm just going to take the scraper and I'm going to scrape it out and get that, you know, in a decent a decent uh, amount of it off before I go ahead and use either diesel fuel or even a gum cutter to soften it up even more. PB Blaster will work also if you're not sure of that. So, I mean, that's what I'm doing, and you gotta gotta make it clean. 
the surfaces have got to be clean. I'm going to be painting this engine green. So I want that thing to be as clean as I possibly can get it so that the paint will stick to it. But wow, let's see if this, uh, it's even good for loosening up gaskets when you get them good and hot. So basically what I've simulated here with the two heaters is a boiling engine. And uh, hopefully that works out. So, alright, that's enough of me hammering on.